Hi there, it's Florence here and it's been a really long time since my last podcast episode actually because the last thing that I uploaded on this channel was the video tutorial to accompany the pattern for the step-by-step -step cardigan. That's something I've been working on for a really, really long time. So thank you everybody who helped give that pattern a warm welcome. You can check my previous video if you're interested in knitting that cardigan. The pattern is available for free on Ravelry using the discount code in the description. Anyway, moving on to this episode, this is going to be a very standard podcast episode. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been making recently, the things that I finished, the things that I currently have in progress, and any yarn that I've picked up since the last episode. There is a bit because it has been quite a long time. Before I jump into that though, as usual, I will mention briefly what I'm wearing. I don't think you can really see it because of my hair, um, but this cardigan is the Peacock cardigan. It's by Lena Holmer Samsa, I think. All the design and names will be in the description. You can find the patterns all linked there, as well as a list of any yarn I used and whatever colors it was used in. I am bad at remembering yarn numbers. I'm bad at pronouncing names, no matter how hard I try. And I know I talk fast enough that some people have problems understanding me. So all of that information will be in the description so that you can check it if you're interested. Anyway, this is a cardigan that I knitted, I think about a year ago. The yarn that I used was gifted, not in the like sponsored sense. <laughs> I was chatting to another knitter um, who has an Instagram account and she was based in South Korea and we ended up exchanging yarn. So I sent her a box of like European yarn and she sent me a box of yarn from South Korea. And the main strand of yarn that I used to knit this cardigan was one of the yarns she sent me. So I believe it's called Argo Superfine Merino or something along those lines. I did have a look and it's not something I was able to find here at all, which is honestly kind of a shame because I really liked this yarn. It is a little bit thicker than something like the Knitting for Olive Merino, but it had quite a similar texture. I held it with one strand of Izia Alpaca One to knit this cardigan since this cardigan is a DK weight and that was more of a slightly heavier fingering weight. And I really love the fabric that I ended up with. It is very, very soft. It does need to be depilled, but I have worn this cardigan a lot, so that is just fine. I really enjoyed this pattern. Um, the lace was very fun to knit, I remember. And I think I would use a similar yarn combination again. Like, I don't think I can find the exact yarn that I used, but I would definitely try holding something similar, maybe like the Knitting for Olive Merino or San Scarn Sunday or something of that type holding that with the Izzia Alpaca One or an equivalent Alpaca lace weight yarn, because I really like the fabric. And if you're not feeling mohair, I think it's a great option for like turning a fingering weight yarn into a DK. Anyway, I'm going to stop there. If you are interested in hearing more about this cardigan, um, I was podcasting at the time when I made this. So there is going to be an episode somewhere where I talk a lot about it. At a guess, I'm probably wearing this cardigan in a picture in the thumbnail. So it should be easy enough to find. And with that, I'm going to jump straight into my first finished object. Actually, I think this is my only finished object. Um, it has been a long time since the last episode, but you'll see when I show you in a second. I have been working on some very large and very involved work in progress pieces with like deadlines and stuff. And so this is the only thing that I finished. Also, I don't think I had even cast this on in the last episode. This has been an idea that I have come up with and fully realized since the last episode. So uh, that's something. This is a summer top. It's a camisole. It's not looking so great <laughs> because I have worn it a few times. So I'm sorry about that. Where do I start with this? I guess I can start off by briefly talking about the yarn. I don't want to sound like a broken record though. I talk about this yarn all the time. This is knitted in the Knitting for Olive Merino. It is my preferred summer top yarn in like a UK climate where it doesn't get that hot. I mean, <laughs> It has got quite hot in recent years, but I find that Merino is pretty comfortable um, pretty much the entirety of the summer. And I don't particularly enjoy knitting with summer yarns like cotton or silk. I find they're harder on my hands and I don't like how the finished fabric doesn't look that even. This always gives a really uniform looking finish. It's super soft after blocking and the color selection is really just amazing. Knitting for Olive do beautiful colors. I really like muted blues and greens and also browns and beiges, I guess. And I've been using that yarn to knit a lot of my projects for the past few years. And I'm still finding colors that I haven't used before to try out. 
So this is called Dusty Aqua, this colour, and I feel like on camera it's showing up a lot more vibrant than it is in real life. It really is quite a muted bluey green. It's a very, very pretty colour. Now I'll try and show you the stitch pattern. This camisole is knitted in a sort of mixed rib stitch pattern. The inspiration for this came from like a store-bought machine knit that I have. I have a long-sleeved jumper, um, it has like flared sleeves, it's very sheer, it's white, it doesn't look anything like this. But when you look really closely at the machine knit, um, it has a very varied rib pattern to it that's kind of similar to this. Actually that one is even more varied, it doesn't really have like a visible repeat, but I thought that if I did a camisole without a visible repeat, it would be a lot more annoying to grade into different sizes because I'd have to do a lot of charts and a lot of thinking. It would also be a lot more tedious to knit because this is a short enough repeat. I think it's like, I don't know, four plain stitches and then some twisted rib. It's a short enough repeat that you don't have to think about it very much. You don't really have to look at your knitting. That would not have been true if I was working with a much longer repeat. And I still think that this stitch pattern gets the idea across, or like gets the look across while being very straightforward and easy to do. Oh yeah, one difficulty with the stitch pattern, um, I don't know if you can see. So this top is constructed top down. So you start at the back of the neck, you cast on along here and then you knit down to underneath the arms and then you pick up stitches um, on both shoulders and then you knit the front panel and join under the arms. What that basically means is that this fabric is knitted flat above the underarm join and then knitted in the round below the underarm join. And when you knit twisted rib like this, or at least when I knit twisted rib like this, the twisted rib stitches do lean very much in one direction. So they're not sort of centered between the stitches on either side. And so when you're knitting it flat, where sometimes your twisted rib is pulling one way and sometimes it's pulling the other way, that twisted rib looks very centered. But then you can see when we get down to this lower section, let's see, the twisted rib lines are really moving towards the stockinette part on, in that direction. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but you can see they're not centered. And so you get this sort of line, I don't know if you can see that, where the twisted rib moves a little bit to the right. I don't have like a <laughs> quick fix for this. I don't really know the best way to resolve it. It doesn't bother me. I don't think most people would notice it at all. It's just when you've knitted something yourself, you're a lot more critical of it, you know? In terms of yarn quantity, I used two balls of the Knitting for Olive Merino. No, I just broke into the third ball to finish the eye cord. So this is basically two balls of yarn. However, um, I think this is a bit too short. I was obviously kind of impatient. Since it is top down, um, that brings all the usual advantages of knitting top down. Like you can use every last bit of yarn and uh, you can try it on to see if the length is right for you. And yet I'm still knitting it too short just because I'm impatient and I always kind of optimistically believe it's long enough when it's not quite. Time will tell whether it bothers me enough to like undo the bind off and add a little extra length. Right now I think it's okay, but we will see. I sometimes wish that I was more of a perfectionist so that I would sort these things out. But yeah, it's awkwardly like a just about okay enough length that I'm not jumping on it. We'll see. This neckline I feel like is very popular at the moment. I'm seeing it everywhere. I don't know what you call it. It's basically like just a slip of the neck, but I did do rounded edges just to make it a little bit more of a comfortable fit. I didn't want the top edge to sit too high at the front of the neck, but I also didn't want it to be too low so that it doesn't give that look. Like I really want that straight across wide neckline look, but without any discomfort. And I think that this worked out really well. It definitely sits the way that I want it to when I'm wearing it. I'm really happy with the fit actually. All the edges are done in I-cord. To be honest, I didn't really want the edges to be the focus of this piece. For a while I was debating trying to leave the edges raw, but actually doing a pretty thin I-cord I don't think takes away from it very much. I think it's really subtle, but it gives a much cleaner finish. And I've knitted so many tops over the last few years which have like double knitted edges or folded edges or something really time consuming like that, so the I-cord actually felt very quick and satisfying to do. 
Overall, I'm very happy with this top. I did do a call for testers for it at the weekend. I think I'm going to contact testers tonight as of filming this. And so by the time you see this video, hopefully the test knit has started and the pattern might be ready so that you guys can knit this for summer. I'm making no promises, but I will do my best because I've noticed a lot of people seem to really like this top. Um, I really like this top. I have plans on it a second, hopefully, if I get time. Yeah, it just feels like a very successful and fairly quick project. Okay, so moving on to the next thing. I'm not going to speak too much about this because I did show this in the last episode and it is still not finished. Um, but this is a top that I've had on the needles for I think about a year now and I just keep putting it down because I knitted the neck edge, um, which is this I-cord, a needle size too large and so the neck is very open and I really need to frog that I-cord and put a new I-cord on that's a little bit tighter and gives the top a little bit more shape. But this is now fluffy yarn, so it's been sitting in this I-cord for a year and I'm really not looking forward to frogging it, so I keep procrastinating on that. However, I did recently finish the body. So it's basically just needing a little bit of extra sleeve finishing. Like I don't want the sleeves to be long, but I need to transfer these stitches that are on hold onto needles, do some rapid decreases and maybe some I-cord to finish it. And then I need to replace this neck I-cord. Um, I won't talk too much about it because as I said, I'm sure you've heard most of it already. But as a summary, this is knitted in Cardiff Cashmere Brush Light, which is a cashmere and silk yarn. It's quite expensive. It's basically a silk core with cashmere through it, sort of like a silk mohair. It's a silk core with mohair through it, if that makes any sense. This is a much shorter and finer halo. It is very, very soft. It feels very, very luxurious. It had better for the price, to be honest. The color that I used is called Mose or Mose. I'm not sure, it's a lovely pale green that I've used for other projects in the past. So this piece has a square neckline, um, puff sleeves, I don't know if you can see, it has rapid increases over the top of the sleeves. It has this keyhole on the front with a tie. Yes, I need to weave ends in. Well, uh, I need to weave ends in once I've redone the whole eye cord. And then since last time, I don't think last time I had done the waistband at all, but it has a fitted body and then at the waist, it has this gathered, see, I don't want to call it a peplum because that gives me flashbacks to like 2012 to 2015 maybe. Was that the age of the peplum? I'm not sure. But it is uh, basically a peplum, right? So I have this gathered mini skirt section. It has eye cord on the join, which I knitted into the fabric as I went. And the eye cord is connected all along the front, but then on the back, I still have the gathering, but there's no connected eye cord. So you can take these eye cord ends that are attached to the front and tie them at the back of the waist. And that way you can really ensure that the waist is like snug um, and it fits really well. I didn't want to do any kind of um, edge along the bottom of the top that would cinch it in because I want it to be this sort of floaty, fluffy, gathered skirt bit. I was thinking of doing an eye cord. What I ended up doing was just like eight rows of garter. I don't know if you can see. I think it looks really nice. It just really needs blocking to stop it from flipping up. But I think that it feels as though once it's blocked, it will stop flipping up and it will work quite well. And then I'll just do garter for the sleeves because I think I want a little bit more structure and a little bit less stretch around the sleeve edge. So yes, I'm not going to go on about this. I am hoping that maybe in the next episode or in the episode after that, this will be completely done. It will have been a long time coming. I am enjoying the process of knitting it. It's uh, just this really pleasant yarn to knit with, very, very soft. And I love the fabric it's making. It's just barely translucent, really ethereal. It's very, very pretty. And I do hope that I'll have plenty of opportunities to wear it this summer. Okay, I feel like I'm really speeding through this because all I have left are two work in progress pieces. <laughs> um, I think in the last episode, I showed two pairs of socks that I was working on. I'm not going to show those here just because I haven't really made much progress on them. I've been prioritizing these other two big work in progress pieces. And yeah, I guess you'll see them in the future when I have made some progress or when I have them finished. And they're still nice projects to have on the go because they're easy to carry with me, whereas these are quite a bit larger. I guess I will start off with the smaller one. This piece is a test knit. 
And so before I get into it, I want to say, um, add this yarn is sponsored. This yarn was gifted by Izia because this is a test knit for Ulla Knitwear who is sponsored by Izia. Okay, um, where do I start with this? This pattern is I think called the Swan Blouse. Um, it does definitely make me think of a swan. It's fluffy and white. I think the original sample is white. I'm also doing it in white, although a different white. Maybe that leads nicely into talking about the yarn. This is knitted in a single strand of silk mohair. You might be listening to that and thinking, wow, that sounds like a time consuming project. You haven't heard the half of it yet, okay? The, the single strand of silk mohair thing, that is not what makes this a huge, huge project. I will get to that in a second. Anyway, I think the original was knitted in the shade E0 from Izzia, which is a very classic cream silk mohair. I instead went for this color. I think I've showed it and spoken about it before on this channel actually. This is just called Zero. So Izzia Mohair E0 and Zero are different colors. E0 is a, a classic cream. Zero, this color is much more cool toned. It's almost like a pinky gray white. Like it doesn't have any of the yellow in it that the, the other cream mohair has. I think a lot of the time if you're holding them with something else they're pretty interchangeable but for this uh, I, I think this is like one of the prettiest cream mohairs. So yeah I think that's perfect for this project. I think I've mentioned before I have used Izzia silk mohair for quite a few pieces in the past. I think this is like probably the softest, easily accessible silk mohair, at least here in the UK and I think in a lot of Europe and probably the US and Canada, I don't know. They're the countries I watch podcasters from the most, I guess. This is a really easy to find silk mohair, you can get it in a lot of shops. I can buy this in Oxford, which is really nice. Um, and it is very, very soft, like it's softer than anything else I could pick up in my local yarn shop, I would say. It's a very typical price for silk mohair as well. And especially for a project like this, you really don't need that many balls since it is knitted with a single strand. So it's the kind of project where even if I was not gifted the yarn, I would like try and pick a mohair that is very, very soft. Cause you're going to be spending a lot of time on this and uh, I think it's worth it. Anyway, yarn is lovely, but it, it's not that interesting since it is something I've used so many times before. Okay, so this is where I'm at. So I don't know if you can see, I've done the back panel and I have knitted the sections that go over the shoulders and I've just barely joined them to knit the front panel. Um, it's just all a little scrunched up and hard to see because I have the back panel on my needles as well because I did not feel like putting it on hold. So the thing that makes this project so large and so ambitious is the stitch pattern. This entire blouse is made of, I think I've seen people refer to it as a tuck stitch. So sometimes when you see a pattern has like a, I don't know how you describe it, almost like a horizontal pleat going across it, it's often used as like a separating detail to break up panels with different stitch patterns or something like that. Basically it's done by knitting a few rows and then you go back and knit the first row together with your live stitches. So you sort of knit some fabric like this and then you knit the first and last row together and you end up with a little pleat. Now this entire top is made of those little pleats and what that means in practice is you're going to knit six rows, um, it's not even stocking out, you've got to knit six rows of rib, um, this whole thing's rib, and then you knit the first and last of those six rows together, or I guess the last of the previous six, yeah, I'm not going to try and think about it too much. You knit six rows to create one row worth of knitting. And so this has, I want to say it's like a 28 stitch gauge, which really doesn't sound that bad, um, but it has I think a 72 row gauge, which is just insanity. Like you have to do so, so many rows to knit even this much. I actually think this might be the test knit that breaks me. Um, I really enjoy test knitting. Like I obviously do a lot of my own designs, but I also very often agree to test knit things because I just think it's fun to knit a real variety of stuff. I feel like I learn a lot of new techniques from test knitting or knitting patterns by other designers. And so it's always something that I want to be involved with. Plus I feel less guilty about having people put a lot of time into test knitting for me if I also do the same for other people. Anyway, um, I am test knitting this. Well, where was I going with that? I've completely forgotten. 
this might be the thing that makes me go, Florence, you should maybe sign up for fewer test nets because this is just going to take me forever. With that being said, it's going to be super beautiful. This blouse is it's basically like a, a short sleeve t-shirt, right? I don't think the actual original sample is finished yet, so we haven't seen a picture of it in its completed state, but at the very least, like the neckline and sleeves are done, so you get a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. I think it just has sort of folded hems, short sleeves, and I believe it's like a boxy fit. We will see when I get to that point in the pattern. I'm getting quite excited now I've joined the front. Um, I think once I join underneath the arms, it's going to be a very travel friendly project because it is so small and so light because of the single strand of mohair, and yet it takes forever. So you're never going to run out of knitting to do while you're out and about. Right now I still need some concentration. I should say this is an advanced pattern. The pattern does describe it as an advanced pattern, but like, listen to the warnings. It really is an advanced pattern. Aside from the tuck stitch, which I don't think is that hard in and of itself, um, it just takes maybe an experienced knitter to not feel discouraged by its rate of growth. Aside from that, there is a lot going on. Like you have to do a lot of stuff while you're doing the tuck stitch. The tuck stitch is like a six row repeat, but all of the increases are a different rate of repeat. So you have to be constantly juggling. When was the last time I did increases? And like, when do I next need to do an increase row? And when was the last time I did like a tuck stitch? I mean, that's easier to tell just by looking, I guess, but like you're constantly juggling these two things. Um, sometimes they'll happen on the same row, that sort of thing. I believe the sleeves have short rows. I actually haven't checked this, but you can see me like touching my face because this is the point where mohair starts getting stuck to my foundation. I am not 100% sure, but I have seen that there are short row instructions in the pattern. So I'm expecting there to be short rows at some point. I will assume it's in the top of the sleeve as the shoulders uh, don't have short row shaping. I know that sounds like I'm hating this project, but I'm really not. I think it's going to be a very beautiful piece when it's finished. Maybe something that's a little bit hard to style in terms of season, like mohair is not something you probably want to wear in very hot weather, but it's still very light and it's going to have short sleeves. I never quite know when to wear short sleeve jumpers. I'm always a big fan of like merino wool in the summer, but mohair in the summer, I might not go that far. I really don't want it sticking to me. Um, I have a really hard time knitting with mohair in the summer as well, I find. But I think if I can get it done during spring when it's still cooler, this will be a really beautiful piece, just so ethereal and delicate. I really like the style of it. And the actual process is not so bad as well. The tuck stitch is quite easy to do once I'm working on the body in the round. It's totally something that I can do like while watching subtitles TV without any problems. So I don't want to put you off this pattern, just like know what you're getting yourself into by the time you start. Oh, and something kind of cool is that I have done this much, so you know, then the back panel, which is fairly sizable, and I've done the shoulder sections. And I'm still on the first ball of mohair. I have this much left of the first ball of mohair. I feel like you can't see it at all, it like blends into the wall, but yeah. The yarn is going a long way. You don't need a lot to knit this top, and so I think this would be a really great project if you have some very special mohair that's very expensive, um, or that you're really excited to work with, because you're really going to spend a long time with it. Uh, you're really going to have to enjoy the process, but you can turn a small amount of yarn into a very beautiful garment. Okay, so I just went on a little mission to retrieve my final work in progress. Don't click off yet. This is this is the big one. This is the exciting one. This is the one that I've been wanting to talk about for this whole video. Where do I start with this one? Some of you might remember a few episodes ago, I showed this book. Um, this book is called something that I'm going to butcher, Norska VM Gensera. Lovely. Um, this book contains knitting patterns for the 17 official jumpers that were made for, I think, the Skiing World Championships for the Norwegian team. Um, this book is entirely Norwegian, a language that I do not speak, although somebody did send me a very good link to like a page teaching Norwegian terms specifically from knitting patterns, which I will link in the description if I remember it. Just uh, in case any of you guys also follow a lot of Norwegian knitting patterns, because it seems to be something I end up doing more frequently than you would expect. Anyway, I got this book and um, while it is slightly ridiculous, it is also a book that I was fully planning on knitting pieces from. 
So I did look through it and I picked out a pattern I wanted to make. I'll see if I can find it for you. So this is the one that I was originally the most drawn to. This is the 1997 Trondheim World Championships jumper. And I really wanted to knit this in Norwegian wool. So the original yarn that these jumpers were knitted in has been discontinued. This does give some alternative suggestions, but they're not suggestions that particularly appeal to me. So I was looking at using the Rauma 3 ply, um, but it's been really, really hard to get. And because I really have my heart set on knitting that Trondheim 1997 jumper in the Rauma 3 ply, and I haven't been able to get my hands on the yarn, I decided to, this sounds pretty ridiculous, I decided to just casually knit another one of these full colorwork skiing jumpers in the meantime, just to keep myself occupied and like build up excitement to knit this one. I know, uh, it's slightly ridiculous. So I needed to pick out some different yarn to use and I ended up going for this one. The gauge for pretty much all of these jumpers is 24 stitches in color work. So I want a DK, but I don't want like a heavy DK. I've seen some people knit them in something like Sandscarn Pigint, which does work, but it looks like it's either going to be very dense or you're going to have to play around with gauge and sizing a bit. Um, but I used some of this a few months ago to knit a jumper. This is Izia Jensen, um, and this is not sponsored. I bought all of this myself, but I was sent some in white a few months ago to test knit a pattern, and I had quite a lot left over. So I am using the white, but I'm also using all of this that I bought myself, and the white was gifted by Izia for a test knit. Anyway, um, these are the colors I'm using. On camera, they all look black, so that's really fun. This is Izzy Jensen, 100% pure new wool. Um, I think it's spun in Denmark. This is a very like woolly wool, like it feels like it came off a sheep. Not in like the scratchy sense. I wouldn't say this is a scratchy wool, but it definitely feels like wool. If you're sensitive to wool, this is probably not the one for you. It comes in these 100 gram hanks. However, each of these 100 gram hanks is like 250 gram ones twisted together. So these ones here, I've actually like taken half of and wound up to already use the project. And you can see I have half left, but it's still kept in the hank. At some yarn shops, you can buy just the 50 grams. So they'll divide the hank into 250 gram hanks and you can buy them in 50 gram increments, which is nice. Um, my local yarn shop, the Oxford Yarn Store, I know does that. I bought this from my ivory room in London because I really wanted to go visit her shop. Um, so I ended up buying all of this in like 100 gram hanks and that's fine, I'll have left over. I plan on knitting more of these jumpers most likely, so that works fine for me. I will tell you the colors since I have them here. Um, this is 100 that I've used, this is the main color. And then I have this dark red 98. This is a gray 23S. I have this green, um, it's like a bluey green color. It's called 11S. This looked super different online when I was browsing. And then I do have this amazing cherry red. I think this is super beautiful. If you're looking for like a red to knit a red jumper, you should check this out, it's lovely. This is 32S. So these have 250 meters per 100 grams. Um, they cost quite a lot of money. I want to say it's like 15 pounds or so for one of these. And I would describe these as a DK, but they definitely lean a little bit on the thinner side for a DK. And I think that these really suit this project, both because of the gauge, also because of the color selection, which I find is very classic, and suits this sort of jumper style well, but also because this jumper is steaked and I wanted a wool with a little bit more grip to it, like nothing super wash, because I'm still a little bit nervous about steaking this thing and I wanted to really trust that it wouldn't go anywhere. So I went ahead and knitted a swatch, which I will show you. It looks like this. And, and for the swatch, I mean, with colorwork swatches, there are a lot of different um, techniques that you can use. But because this jumper is going to be steaked, I knitted this as a tube. So I was only working the colorwork from the right side. And then once it was done, I cut it open. And I think that just kind of instills some confidence in me that when I cut armholes into this jumper, it's not going to fall to pieces. Anyway, this is what it looks like. I actually did a stitch incorrectly and then I colored it in with a Copic marker. If you guys remember Copic markers from back in the day. Can you tell where I messed up the pattern and corrected it with the marker pen? I don't think you can. Um, this swatch certainly looks like something. 
This is for the 1992 jumper. I will put a picture of it here. This is one of the Winter Olympic ones, so it's not in the book. You can find this pattern online. Um, it was printed previously in a booklet in English, so there is an English pattern floating around, but I haven't been able to find it anywhere. In terms of construction, this thing is knitted from the bottom up, so you cast on at the bottom, you knit rib, you continue with a great big tube um, all the way up to the shoulders, and then you like seam the shoulders, they're steaked, you put sleeves into the steaked armholes, all that good stuff. But it does mean that it's actually a pretty forgiving one to follow in a foreign language, just because so much of it is just like, follow the chart, and the chart is not in Norwegian, so I can do that. And this is where I am currently at. So I have a lot. I probably should avoid showing you the side seam because the pattern doesn't match up on the sides, so it will look much prettier if I show you the front like this. Yeah, this thing is, in my humble opinion, beautiful. Uh, I am having the time of my life knitting this, just obsessed. It's super fun, this particular chart um, I find is like a nice balance of being interesting but not being something you have to think too much about. You do have to check the chart every round, but once you've looked at the chart at the start of the round you can then put it away, you don't have to follow it for the entire round. So I really enjoy that. I have the chart on my iPad so I just carry it around with me. I've been taking this entire project bag into work so I've been knitting this on all of my lunch breaks. And that's basically where I've made most of the progress on this while I worked on that mohair test knit at home. This jumper has two of these big pattern repeats, so there's one on the bottom of the jumper and there's one that goes across the top of the chest like this. And then in between the two it has this snowflake motif. Now this being bottom up is a little bit stressful because this is not going to be an easy piece to adjust the length of. Um, like once I've steaked it, <laughs> uh, I guess I'd have to sort of cut the ribbing off, or I guess even cut it up here within the snowflake motif. and transfer stitches onto needles, add more snowflake motifs, and then seam it back together again. I assume that'd be the way to do it, but that sounds like a pain, so I don't want to do that. But I was really struggling to decide how many of these snowflakes to put in. I think the original jumper, when I see it online, has maybe six. It actually varies quite a lot. So these jumpers, I think, were released, like you could just buy them as completed jumpers, um, but they were also released as knitting patterns. So there are slightly differing versions of this floating around the internet. The Ravelry page is fabulous. It has about eight projects and half of them are like, I knitted this jumper in 1998 and I'm still wearing it now. So definitely a different experience for me since I tend to knit like the newest petite knit pattern or something. Um, but yes, super excited to help populate the Ravelry page for this pattern. I did two rows of snowflakes when you're supposed to do like six or more and I got a jumper that I know I like the fit of and I lay it flat and I put this on top of it and I tried to judge, like measuring the height of this motif, how many snowflakes I needed to have the second copy of this motif and just below the shoulder. And two felt correct. So we're going to find out if that works or if it was a horrible mistake. It remains to be seen. The yarn is a joy to knit with. Um, it's everything I hoped it would be. I love the colours together. It's very hard to tell when you're buying online what the colours are going to look like side by side, but this is basically a ripoff of the colour combination that was used in the original sample or version of this jumper that was sold. I don't know. I don't know if you can see. It has like the blue, the white pattern carries on over everything. But this one has the blue, then it goes into like a dark red, then the vibrant red, then it jumps straight to a green, which is fun, and then the gray, and then we go back outwards again. So yeah, I think that looks super cool. And I am speeding through this. I am just loving it. And I don't think it will be very long before you see this completed. Um, so modifications that I'm doing to this jumper are a lot. I'm following the chart. I'm not really following the pattern. I think this jumper from memory has like a smaller waist, like fewer stitches to the rib, and then you increase all the way up the body, um, which I feel like is a slightly dated look. I don't know. I just wanted it to be straight up and down. And so I picked a stitch count that is not any of the sizes, cast on that many stitches. With patterns like this, the motif doesn't match up on the sides anyway. So you don't need to worry about picking a stitch count such that the motif matches up. It doesn't need to. 
and I'm just going to carry on knitting a big tube for the entire body. The sleeves I'm more concerned about because this jumper, it's that kind of style where like the sleeves uh, don't have any shaping in the top. It's just a big tube with like some taper towards the cuff. And these jumpers tend to have a lot of extra fabric under the arms. My dad um, and my sister both wear these sorts of Norwegian colorwork jumpers all the time in the winter. Um, and they're always complaining or like asking me for help with how they can modify them to take out some of the extra fabric that they get in the like underarm area. And I feel like that sort of drop shoulder only works when the jumper is very, very oversized, which this is not. This is like probably 20 to 25 centimeters positive ease on me. It's a bit hard to tell right now. I did do a gauge swatch, so I'm sensible, but um, this wasn't the needle size I ended up using. I knitted this swatch, went up on needle size, and then didn't want to knit a second swatch, so I'm still slightly in the dark. So I am not quite sure that those sleeves will look good, and I'm not a very confident or proficient colour work knitter, so the question's going to be, can I find a way to make the sleeves sit at an angle? Do I want to try and do some kind of short rows? Do I want to do some kind of like staggered bind off? What am I going to do to make the sleeves sit at like a downwards angle rather than straight out? Because that's what I want, to get less fabric in the underarm. That is a problem for future me right now. I'm just having fun knitting a big tube. This transitions nicely into the next part of this video, which is I was having so much fun knitting the big tube I've bought yarn to make another one. I went at the weekend to the Oxford Yarn Store, which is my local yarn shop, and I was just curious as to like what the options were for a light DK that is non-superwash and woolly and would work out well for a jumper like this. Actually, um, I did make a post on my story. I didn't think anybody else would be ridiculous enough to be knitting one of these jumpers in April, but apparently some people are, because I've managed to make an Instagram group chat with about 25 people in it, and we're all knitting these sorts of jumpers together and it's very cool seeing how everybody's jumpers are looking. And the one that I always see posted in that group that just I cannot stop thinking about is another Winter Olympic one that is not in the book. It's the Lillehammer 1994. I will put a picture here, but you have probably seen it before because I think it's definitely the most well-known of all of these Dala jumper patterns. So I know that I want to make this jumper. I think it will be a nice one to move on to after this and I was looking for a sort of sport weight light DK wool and I found this. It is very much not Norwegian. Um, this is Rosa Pomar Bovo. This is Portuguese wool. I've used Rosa Pomar Mondine, which is like the most popular, I think, the sock yarn. Um, and I used it for socks and I didn't like it for socks. It wore through very quickly. But I don't think that should stop me using it for jumpers. Like I think it's a nice woolly wool. I just need nylon in my socks. And it also came in a really beautiful selection of colours. So I'm going for a very different colour scheme for the Lillehammer. I will show you. I've gone for something I think quite traditional for the Albaville. And so for this one, I wanted to do something very different. And for the main patterning all over the body, I was going to use these two. So this is... Do you have a colour name? That ball doesn't, but this ball does. This is... 20, maybe? I can't read what the uh, the numbers on the packaging are. I think that the white is 20 and the blue is A568. I will dig out the other colours that I, I got. Here they are. Can you see the colour combination? This is A583. The brown is number one. And then A573 for the green. So this is what they look like. And yeah, most of it's blue and white, and then the details will include these other colours as well. I am super excited to try this yarn. I think it's going to be just perfect for this project. I'll have to play around a bit with needle size, but um, yeah, it feels very cool that I'll have one of these jumpers in a very classic colour scheme, and then one of these jumpers in very sort of eastery pastels. I'm not really a pastel colour person, but blue and white is very much in my comfort zone, so I think I'll be really happy with that. I thought I might be done, um, but I do have one other yarn purchase that I've made since the last episode, which is this guy. So when I went to London, I actually went to watch the boat race. It was a lot of fun, good time to be a Cambridge fan, which I am despite living in Oxford. Um, I went to get the Jensen for the Alberville sweater from my Rue Rim in London, and I also picked up a couple of these. <laughs> I've been looking at this colour every time I go into any shop that sells knitting for olive which includes my local yarn shop. It's called 
poppy blue and every time I ask whoever I'm with whether I could pull off this colour and they, without exception, say to me, no, or they're like, mmm, <laughs> yeah, totally. But I believe that this colour is going to be cute and so I got it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, I bought two of them which is like a summer top quantity if I'm taking risks. Should I have bought three? Probably. But yes, I got two. And then I got one more uh, sweater quantity while I was there. This is Rauma Fival. So I'm trying to get this Rauma 3 ply to make the Trondheim jumper, but without any luck there, um, I did get this instead. This is too thick to do one of those jumpers. This is a 16 to 18 stitch gauge, 100 meters per 50 grams, and the color is 200. It is really beautiful. This is a very much woolly wool. Um, I actually don't find it too scratchy. I think it's probably okay for a jumper that's going to sit against my neck, but if you're sensitive to wool, I wouldn't risk it. It has that very distinctive Norwegian wool look to it, like the way it's spun. I don't know what you call it, but it looks really pretty. And it's a very beautiful gray beige color. For this, I was thinking cables. When I was in the shop, Valentina asked me if um, I was going to knit one of the Skull Studio knits. I wonder if I can put a picture here. Um, this is a clothing company that I quite like. I own quite a few pieces of clothing from them. They also have sold yarn in the past, although I believe it's sadly discontinued. But they also sell knitting patterns for a lot of the jumpers that they sell in their store. And this yarn apparently works perfectly for it gauge-wise, and I think I have enough. So maybe I'll do that, but this is going to be something that I knit up for winter, not anytime soon. Just something I really look forward to trying out. I don't remember how many I bought. Um, quite a lot, I think. 12? 13? Something like that. Okay, I think that is actually it this time, and um, my lunch break is over, so I need to go back to work. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back in soon with another knitting podcast. Goodbye. <laughs>